So I'm on my way back to California. Was up in Seattle for a little while, just a couple days. I uh, was supposed to take a test yesterday, but my alarm clock didn't go off, uh, so I had to reschedule. And I rescheduled this morning and took the test in Olympia, and now I'm on my way back to California. It's been a, kind of a crazy couple days, having a very little sleep. Drove all the way from San Francisco area in California. Um, all the way up to basically Seattle. The first night I left at midnight and got up there around three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I stopped in Portland, had some uh, had some lunch with my cousin, which was pretty awesome, and got to see the city a little bit. I've never been actually inside the city, and so that was good. It's kind of like San Francisco. It's um, a little more laid back though, from what I can tell. Now this thing, this was a purchase I made almost a year ago, and it has been one of the biggest joys in my life. I bought it with almost 10,000 miles on it. It's a 2008, so you know we're in 2016. So it's almost, you know, it's eight, eight years old with 10,000 miles. I've kept it pretty good though. For the last year, I've only put like 3,000 3, miles on it, uh, excluding this trip. So it's not bad. A couple of other dealerships, and I was looking at buying a used Viper. Um, first gen, second gen, somewhere in there. Um, that was kind of my budget, thirty to 40000 And I don't know. I, I went and saw a 1990, uh, 1996. It was black, and it looked terrible. Um, the hood was cracked in places, there was vents missing, the interior looked pretty good, but it was well aged, you know, it was from 1996, but it's been outside a bit. And uh, it only had 20,000 miles on it. I was like, oh wow, okay, you know, that's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I looked at the Viper and I was like, uh, I don't know. My wife absolutely did not want me to get the Viper. She said it wasn't practical and you know, driving it around down as a daily driver would not be practical. And I kind of agreed. It's an older car. And, you know, at some point you, you have to say, okay, you know. Plus it was a manual, obviously. And she wanted to be able to drive, you know, whatever I get uh, kind of on a daily basis. So she doesn't know how to drive manual. And honestly, even if she did, I wouldn't probably trust her driving a car that powerful. So I went online, I, I looked at like, you know, top 10 car lists and I did all the research I could and I found, you know, the Corvette. I've never been really a huge Corvette guy. I've never been like really astounded by the Corvette. It's never really interested me really. Um, they're beautiful cars. I like this car and it's, it's great for what I do, it's a daily driver. Uh, I still kind of want a Viper, um, but that's also my indecisiveness and everything else, so who knows. I looked at this thing, saw the beautiful blue color it was, saw it only had 10,000 miles, and I just had to get it. It looked brand new, inside and out, and had to get it. So I bought it for about 30,000 and which is a pretty good price. And it's got an automatic with the paddle shifters and everything else. I absolutely, let me tell you, 
if you want to use a Corvette, even the brand new ones, the C7s and even like the uh, the Cadillac CTSVs, if you want to use the paddle shift or to do things like race, <laughs> uh, forget about it. The paddle lag, the, the shift lag is so terrible, I, I don't even use it. it. It's just, it's so bad. Um, it's fine for like if you're up in the mountains and you kind of want to go through the twisties. Um, it does pretty good, you know, with that sort of stuff. But if you're trying to go fast, quick, and shift through the gears, it it's not going to work. So, what do you guys like? Do you guys like, uh, I mean, what would you rather get? Would you get like a Corvette? If your budget was, say, 30000 40000 would you get a Corvette? Or would you go out and buy some brand new Ricer, like an Evo or a STI or something like that? I'm curious. I'm curious what people...